What's up guys today's video is on the top 10 best running shoes 2022 through extensive research and testing I've put together a list of options that'll meet we needs of different types of buyers. So whether it's price performance or it's particular use we've got you covered for more information on the products. I've included links in the description box down below which are updated for the best prices. Like the video comment and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. 10th place. Saucony Ride 15. The Saucony Ride 15 is a reliable running shoe that feels and costs similarly to the Brooks Ghost 14. It has a substantial layer of Saucony's Perun cushioning, a breathable mesh upper, and a modified fit to guarantee it cradles the foot when running. It's a comfy, dependable workhorse that will carry you from point A to point B at any speed you choose. The Ride 15 boasts a lighter, more breathable upper than prior editions of the sneaker, which keeps your feet from getting too hot and sticky as the temperature increases. It's also lighter than earlier iterations of the shoe, which is always a good thing, because Saucony tweaked the Perun cushioning to make it lighter while remaining responsive. The Ride 15 isn't the most visually appealing shoe on the market, but if you're looking for a durable shoe that provides a reasonable degree of comfort on long runs and snap during quicker workouts, it's a fine pick. Ninth place. On Cloud Monster. With its huge wedge of cloud tech, the Cloud Monster sounds and looks ludicrous. This shoe is a monster by name and monster by nature, yet it doesn't feel like it underfoot. Ant's Maximalist shoe is designed for easy runs and lengthy training kilometers, with a high energy return. The Cloud Monster is cushioned underfoot, thanks to Ant's newest cushioning technology, Helion. Made with a combination of two distinct foams, EVA and OBC, yet with a high energy return. The midsole features Ant's Cloud Tech pods and Ant's Speedboard, a thin, snappy thermoplastic layer meant to aid in toe-off speed. However, it is more of a long-run shoe than a speed shoe. The shoe does come up very short in the foot, so if you're in between sizes, you might want to size up to avoid any painful pinching at the toes. During testing, we also discovered that the high stack height caused some overpronation at the conclusion of lengthy runs on weary legs, so we wouldn't suggest them for runners who typically wear a support shoe. Overall, a fantastic easy run shoe for those plotty miles when you want to get buried in your run. 8th place, Saucony Peregrine 12. When it comes to trail running, the Saucony Peregrine is a classic. It's been around for a while, and many people like it because of its dependability when jogging on rough terrain. The Peregrine 12 is no exception, with the brand making some tweaks to make the shoe more comfortable over longer distances. To begin, the Peregrine 12 is lighter than prior editions of the shoe, having been stripped down for blistering speeds, according to Saucony. Despite its small weight, the shoe offers a fair degree of Saucony's Perun cushioning, which is comfortable but still firmer than other trail shoes on the market, such as the Nike Pegasus Trail 3. When it comes to trail running, grip is everything, and the Peregrine 12 performs admirably on wet, slippery conditions as well as mud. The Peregrine 12 now incorporates a protective rock plate, and the shoe is much more flexible than prior generations. The disadvantage here is that the shoe does not come in a wide form, which may not be suited for all runners. During testing, we also discovered that the tighter heel cup, meant to keep the heel from sliding and to provide support on rough terrain, rubbed a bit. Long socks should be worn with these shoes. 7th place. Nike Zumex Vaporfly Next% 2. On race day, nothing beats the Nike Vaporfly Next% 2. There's a reason you'll see this shoe at every major road marathon, it's one of the most popular racing shoes available, and it's simple to understand why. The Zumex foam is Nike's lightest and most responsive midsole, and there's a full-length carbon fiber plate for a speedier toe-off. The sneaker moves quickly, is really light, and fits according to size. The disadvantage here, of course, is the price, these shoes are obviously an investment, and one that may not last you very long. While Nike does not provide a precise statistic, as a race day shoe, it is widely assumed that you would not get many miles out of these, hence we would not recommend them for training miles. However, if you can afford them and are seeking for a PR position, you will not be disappointed. 6th place. Adidas Ultraboost 22. When Adidas originally debuted the Ultraboost shoes February 2015, the running world went crazy for the bouncy boost foam, which truly felt exhilarating underfoot. The Ultraboost is still one of Adidas' most popular running shoes seven years later, and it's simple to understand why, it's a fantastically comfortable sneaker that looks and feels amazing underfoot. The Ultraboost 22 was created for female runners by an all-female design team. Adidas redesigned their Ultraboost 21 using scans from 1.2 million female feet, giving the Ultraboost 22 a thinner heel, a lower instep, and an S-curve heel to allow the Achilles tendon to move more freely. There isn't much of a difference between the Ultraboost 21 and 22, 
but it's still incredibly bouncy, with a reasonable amount of energy return underfoot. The weight is undoubtedly one of the heavier shoes on this list, but unless you're truly hoping to make the podium, this is unlikely to trouble most runners. The storage container, which also includes a unique spatula for fast cleanup, can hold all of the blades and accessories. Download the free Magimix app, which has hundreds of recipes, to make the most of the equipment. Fifth place. A6 Gel Kayano 28. If you're searching for a classic stability shoe, the A6 Gel Kayano is an excellent choice. The Gel Kayano is a shoe designed for overpronators, runners whose feet collapse inwards while they run. It contains a firm medial post that runs around the inside of the shoe to give stability, as well as more cushioning in the midsole to provide greater arch support. The Kayano 28 is still as dependable as ever, but A6 has introduced gender-specific structural variances for more tailored support, as well as their FF Blast mid-foam for a smoother, snappier toe-off. Whereas past Kayano iterations felt heavy and unwieldy, this is a superbly responsive shoe that works for all distances. It goes without saying that not every runner will require this structural support in their shoe, so get your gait properly tested at a running shop before purchasing. A6 now makes a light version of the Kayano for runners who just mildly pronate or who require a little more stability in the last kilometers of a race. Fourth place, Brooks Ghost 14. It's a long-held belief in the shoe industry that men's and women's running shoes are just different colors. The changes may be subtle, but women's shoes are built for a woman's foot, which is frequently smaller and narrower than a man's. In the case of Brooks, the typical size for ladies is a B width, while the usual size for men is a D. The Ghost 14 is a fantastic shoe for both men and women, but we've given it the top rank for women because of fitting modifications that make it exceptionally comfortable, even on testers with higher arches. Brooks running shoes are known for being soft and comfy, and the Ghost 14 lives up to that reputation, particularly on long runs. The Ghost 14 is also available in narrow, standard, wide, and extra-wide widths, making it even easier to find the right fit. The Ghost 14 employs Brooks's DNA loft cushioning for a velvety underfoot sensation, similar to the Glycerin 19, but the Ghost is somewhat stiffer, making it better suited for shorter, quicker runs than the Glycerin. The Ghost is also $20 less expensive than the Glycerin, making it a bit more accessible. Third place. Brooks Glycerin 20. The Glycerin, dubbed Brooks's softest shoe, is one of the most popular running shoes on the market, and for good reason. Brooks has changed the DNA Loft midsole foam with the DNA Loft V3, a lighter, poppier, nitrogen-infused midsole foam that Brooks originally introduced last year in the Aurora BL. During testing, we discovered that, while it is undoubtedly best suited for long, leisurely kilometers, the Glycerin 20 can still crank up the pace when needed. The shoe is available in a variety of sizes, as well as three widths, medium, the standard, broad, and narrow, as well as a support version dubbed GTS by Brooks. The Glycerin isn't the cheapest everyday running shoe on this list, especially since it's not the most flexible. However, if your aim is to get moving or around the course, you'll be hard-pressed to find a more comfortable shoe. Second place. New Balance Fresh Foam X1080 V12. It goes without saying that you don't need numerous pairs of running shoes to be a runner. While some people may invest in many pairs for different sessions, if you're new to running or on a tight budget, you may still gain fitness and prepare for races with only one pair. Furthermore, if you're seeking for that one pair, the New Balance Fresh Foam X1080 V12 is an excellent sneaker to purchase. The New Balance 1080 V12 is a very flexible shoe that is soft and plush enough to keep you comfortable on extended runs but can also pick up the pace when you need it for quicker tempo workouts. Fit-wise, we thought it to be a significant improvement over the 1080 V11, since New Balance has removed the molded heel, which was quite divisive among lovers of the shoe. The shoe runs large, in fact, we recommend going down half a size on these shoes because they are incredibly spacious. While this will not harm you if you obtain the proper size, it is inconvenient for runners, especially when shopping online. First place. Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 39. If you love the swoosh, picking for the best Nike running shoes might be difficult. While we love the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next% percent on race day, we understand that not every runner wants to compete, which is why the Pegasus 39 took the top slot here. It was a tight choice between this and the Nike Invincible Run, which is also an excellent everyday shoe, but the Pegasus proved just more adaptable throughout testing. It has a substantial amount of React foam in the midsole for a lightweight, snappy sensation underfoot that isn't excessively bouncy and leaves you feeling unstable when running. The Pegasus is a workhorse that can be worn for a marathon, your first 5k, or pretty much anything in between. To be on its 39th edition, a shoe must be doing something well, 
and with the Pegasus, you're getting dependability. The Nike Pegasus 39 is a significant upgrade over the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38 in terms of fit, and Nike has also put an additional Zoom Air unit in the heel of the foot for a more responsive feel. We're not sure if that's because the shoe is lighter than the Pegasus 38 or because it features a second Zoom Air unit, but the result is a sneaker that feels snappier on the run. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I hope to see you all in the next video. See you later guys.